I always say I'm not a doctor, not giving medical advice. I'm giving runners advice, okay? So this is what worked for me over the course of three weeks, yeah, to get rid of the runner's knee, okay? So here we go. Number one, I had to come to grips with stopping running, all right? So that was hard. Very difficult decision because I was getting ready for a marathon, and you know the story there. So I had to stop running, and that was not an easy decision, but I do believe, looking back, it was definitely, definitely the right decision. Some runners have reported to me that they were able to run through the runner's knee uh, and they were they did not have to stop running because they supplemented, they reduced their volume a lot, but they could still continue to jog. I chose the option of stopping running completely because what happened was I woke up one morning after a long run and I was walking around my house and the pain was a seven or eight on the pain scale. It was really, really painful, like just walking around my house. And that's when I knew I just don't think I can push through this injury, especially leading into a marathon race, okay? So that was step one, I had to stop running. And after I stopped running, it took, just so everyone knows, it took four days before I could walk around pain-free, okay? It was four days of basically limping. It hurt to get in and out of my car, it hurt to lay like on my stomach, on my bed, my kneecap when it was resting on the bed. It was really painful. Um, almost a little bit of a burning sensation, which I guess is kind of, um, it's, it can be not normal, but it can happen with runners knee, a little burning sensation around the kneecap. So, oh, it was, it didn't, it was no fun. It was not fun. That is the, uh, the pain scale that I was dealing with. And step two, physical therapy. Seek out professional help. It's so important. I sometimes, sometimes I'm a little stubborn about going to the doctors, going to the per medical professionals. I think I can self-diagnose, but sure enough, I said, you know what? Enough is enough. Let's stop running. Let's go to the medical professionals and seek out professional help. So I made a blog. It was called Running Injuries and Physical Therapy. Is it a gift? So up right hand corner, go check it out. And when I went to physical therapy, I was like, man, I was kind of, I wasn't moping, but I was like, oh, this, the Houston Marathon, like, this is my goal. I want to try to qualify for the Olympic trials. And he was working with me. Ricky is his name. He was working with me. And he's like, listen, man, we're going to do our best. At the end of the day, you got to listen to your body. And so we started the physical therapy and immediately, so he's a soccer player. That's a little tip of the day. I would, for me, I sought out a, a physical therapist who has an athletic background. So he's a soccer player, played in college, played in high school. And so he really came, he understood where I was coming from, from an athlete uh, perspective. So the amount of knowledge that I have gained from Ricky, from the physical therapy, it's like I'm going to school for physical therapy school. It's amazing. And so I started the physical therapy at about basically a pain, a pain scale of like six or seven. That even includes like stationary bike riding. Like it was so, so painful to just ride the stationary bike and to do basically any of the exercises, any of the leg movements. And oh yeah, okay. The first thing he did when I came into the office, Ricky, and I was very skeptical. He did a hip, a hip strength test, okay? Where he basically pressed on my leg in different directions that he knew how to do because he's the medical professional and he pushed and he's like, okay, your left hip is way weaker than your right hip. I didn't know that. How was I supposed to know that? Like nobody's ever tested my left hip strength. And so it was very, very apparent. Like my right leg, he was putting all of his, his weight into it. And he's a kind of a big, strong guy. And he could barely move my right, my right leg, my right hip. And, but my left leg, I could not resist his strength. Not at all, but it was very, very different than my right leg. So, of course, in my simple mind, without an anatomy or biology background or, you know, medical background, I'm like, wait a minute, the pain is in the knee, below the knee. How does the hip connect to the knee? And I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying I still fully understand this, but he walked me through, you know, as best he could and me, like, under trying to wrap my mind around, like, my, my weak left hip is what he said in, in his um, diagnosis and same with the doctor as well but his diagnosis as a physical therapist is that that is the issue the main issue as to why my runner's knee flared up is a weak left hip so it's just crazy and again so anyway that's step two going to the physical therapist and diagnosing my left hip 
being much, much. I wish I would have filmed him doing the strength testing. Uh, I didn't film that, but um, anyway, it was very, very obvious. And step three, go to the gym and do physical therapy every single day or at your house. That works too. You can do all this at your house. I have found the gym to be a good routine for me, but I was a little shocked. Ricky told me to do this physical therapy work every single day. I thought it'd be like maybe twice a week or every other day. He's like, no, if you want to attack this, you got to go. You got to do these exercises every single day. So that's what I did. And it was tiring and it took a lot of time. And, you know, I had to, I had to move some things around in my daily schedule to make sure I could fit in because from start to finish, it's at least 30 minutes and usually closer to 40 to 45 minutes of all of these exercises to get them done. Um, so I would go to the gym and uh, do them. You've seen me film a lot over the last uh, 30 days. No, well, not 30 days, last uh, three weeks basically of doing these hip strengthening exercises especially. Now, I will say I've also introduced, um, so because I'm advancing quickly, um, he's also introduced kettlebells, okay? And that's one reason I switched gyms in 2020. I, I moved over to a new gym that has kettlebells, also some box jumping. And just today, I've introduced single leg box jumping. So this is a big deal. I, there's no way I could have done single leg box jumps. Um, even, frankly, definitely not like two weeks ago. Um, and even maybe 10 days ago. So again, the knee and the leg strength is really, really responding to this physical therapy that is coming from a medical professional. But I guess my, my go-to step three is the gym. The gym, you can do this at your house, but for me, the accountability of going to the gym, it just helps me mentally to know, okay, I have these pieces of equipment there that I can use. Okay, step four for getting rid of runner's knee. These are two exercises that I'm going to put in a, a separate step four category because I actually did not pick them up from physical therapy. Uh, I was One of them was just my own, just introducing on my own with Ricky's permission, but I didn't pick it up from, from Ricky because of my weak quads. Again, a little bit of a self-diagnosis, but it's, it's the experience of knowing, okay, I'm not doing the vertical running up in the mountains. I'm pointing this way because that's what the direction of the mountains from the studio. Um, so not doing the vertical means I think my quads have gotten a little weaker. So I've introduced leg extensions into my gym routine. Now this was, Ricky did not tell me to do this. He gave me the thumbs up though. Once I asked him, can I be introducing this into the daily gym routine? And so I'm doing these leg extensions, just single leg extensions, lightweight, 25 to 40 pounds, nothing crazy. And again, just to work on that quad strength until I can reintroduce some hill running, some mountain running back into the regimen, okay? So leg extensions, and I think it's really actually helped quite a bit, okay? Really helped a lot. So, and then also um, the slant board. Shout out to Mark and other folks down in the comments for uh, teaching me about the slant board. So you see it on your screen right now. I bought it, it wasn't cheap. It was about 50 bucks, okay? Not cheap but I will have this thing for the rest of my life. I use it not every day, about four days a week, maybe five days a week. I'll hop on it, do three sets of 10, um, and here's the slant board. And so you see me doing these squats. The key is to keep your knees over your toes. And for some reason, that slant, um, I don't know, a lot of, okay, where did I? So a lot of YouTubers who have runners, runner's knees, uh, runner's knee, the runner's knee injury have said that this slant board has really helped them uh, overcome their injury and I would have to uh, agree with them. As soon as I started using the slant board, it was honestly like a light switch moment. Almost like two days later, the pain, I woke up one morning and I told True Love, I said, True Love, I just had a shift in the pain. Like the pain has really, really subsided quickly after using this slant board. I'm not, I'm not making this up. Now, I think it was also because I had taken the time off of running, I was doing the physical therapy, uh, but I'm telling you everyone, as it was like two days later after starting the slant board work where I woke up and I was like, whoa, something feels different. Something feels much, much better in my knees. So anyway, that's step four, uh, leg extensions and slant board. And step five, I'm going to put it all into one, one step, one category. It's the, the normal stretching, um, massaging, and 
foam rolling, okay? The three things that I was doing a lot of before the runner's knee, I was. But keeping up with that, and again, I've learned a lot about stretching. I'm actually taking some very um, active steps to increase my stretching. I'm going to talk to you about that in a, a separate vlog, but that's step five, keeping up with a very, I'll just say rigorous stretching, rigorous foam rolling, and rigorous massaging. And with that foam rolling, like, every day at the gym like i am really digging in and remember with foam rolling slower is always better with foam rolling okay so those are my five steps um i'm trying to think okay i did just think of two more the reason i switched gyms so i've heard someone say motion is lotion for tendons and ligaments in our joints so the more motion we can get the better so that's why i go into the pool and do the laps in the pool even though i don't love swimming i go into the pool to get that motion also, uh, I switched gyms because they have a steam room, and I have found that heat has really, really helped the knee. Also, um, the hot tub, so the, the new gym that I go to has a hot tub, and so the jets, what I do is I basically place my lower quad and right around the knee, not right on the knee, but right around the knee, I let the jet in the hot tub hit the knee. And I'm telling you, it's, I feel like it just helped loosen everything up around the knee i don't know and again this is a little bit of self um diagnosis or not self diagnosis but self um prescribing uh things that are action items that i did to help me feel better all right so steam room and the the jets in the hot tub all right so once again here we go in conclusion two weeks of no running physical therapy especially for hip strength gym work with daily physical therapy uh, the home remedies of the uh, the slant board, and then of course the leg extensions at the gym, the foam rolling, the stretching, the massaging. Oh my gosh, I know it's a lot, but all of that added together, plus the heat at the steam room, I'm just going to add that as well. That is what has gotten me to this point where I was, I was honestly a little concerned that I was going to be out. I was so painful. I thought I was going to be out for two months three months, four months. I've heard some people struggle with runner's knee for six months. That's crazy. And after two and a half weeks, um, it was gone. Okay. Zero on the pain scale after 10 days. Okay. 